Thank you, Mark. It's often forgotten that for 20 years the Labour Party was the most Eurosceptical uh, party, of the, certainly of the main three parties in, in the country. And it's worth reflecting on how the Labour Party from the 1970s and 80s, which wanted immediate withdrawal uh, from the European Union, in actual fact it was almost impossible a bit like the Conservative Party now, to be selected as a, can, a candidate, either at local level, national level, or European uh, level, if you weren't opposed to the EEC or, or, or later the European Union. The reason uh, that change was twofold, I, I, I think. One, it became associated with a decade and a half of electoral failure, wrongly, because there were other issues. Uh, involved with it, and, and secondly, because the trade union movements decided that they could take a free run at extra protection for uh, workers uh, by getting to laws and the European Union to do the job that should be done by local uh, democracy. So, effectively, sometime in the early 1990s, the issue of Europe was put into another box. It went into hibernation. And there has been almost no discussion uh, since the mid-1990s of a pro-anti uh, debate within the Labour Party. And that leaves us in a, a very uh, curious position. First of all, it's worth saying that the Labour leadership, the Labour Party, can't in any sense oppose referenda on principle because we've uh, put them through at local level. Uh, we promised in the 2005 mani manifesto to have a referendum on what was then the European Constitution uh, and, and didn't have it. So there's no principle of objection uh, to doing that. So when I listen to the Labour leadership, it is effectively, uh, I, the two, there are two arguments. One, it is the wrong time and it would be damaging to the European economy, or uh, it would cost us a lot of jobs. And I think, if I, I just take those in reverse order, uh, that the Many Labour Party spokespeople come out with the, this would immediately mean the loss of three and a half million uh, jobs. Well, that's complete nonsense. When we are in a trade deficit with the European Union, withdrawing when we're still in the European economic area would not cost jobs. We'd still be able uh, to trade, and a debate around a referendum would be able to kill some of those, uh, some of that false in information. And then secondly, the issue is the wrong time uh, because it would exacerbate uh, the crisis that there is in the uh, Eurozone and the rest of the European Union. I think it's exactly the wrong uh, analysis. When, while the Eurozone is in crisis, the leadership of the uh, European Union, Barroso, and the, the German Chancellor, the President of France, they are looking at a way of trying to get more Europe, which is the cause of Europe being the epicenter of the international crisis. And I think we need to be arguing that actually, rather than having more Europe, which has caused uh, a lot of this crisis, we should actually be arguing for, uh, for, for our withdrawal and for breaking up uh, the Eurozone, which is causing so much instability in, in the world economy. I find it embarrassing that both front branches, by, by uh, asking for more fiscal union, more control from the centre over expenditure and taxation in Greece and other countries, are actually arguing for the expunging of democracy in Greece and, and elsewhere. And I think we need to have those arguments. We won't win the votes on uh, Monday, but it's only the beginning of the debate, because as other speakers have said, this is simply uh, a debate about democracy and the right for people to decide whether we want to be in the European Union, which we've not been asked about before or not. I think we, in the Labour Party, we need to re-educate ourselves both about the economic issues and the democratic issues, and I see Monday as the start of that debate. Thank you.